everyone likes a good tornado movie, right? In celebration of Twister getting a sequel, I decided to create a fun shot with a tornado. And I'm using the Apocalypse Pack that has some really cool tornado effects and a lot of extra stuff that we'll get into later. So let's hop on over to After Effects and see how we could make a blockbuster style Twister really easily. All right, so I'm in After Effects here and I have my background plate right here and we just had him acting like he's holding something uh, in front of the blank sky there. So we're gonna throw that into a new composition by just dragging it in and First thing we're gonna do is we're going to go and rotoscope this. So let's take the roto brush tool here, double click on our footage, and we're going to, and if I hit control drag with my left mouse button, I can make that bigger and I will drag in the parts that I see him in and then I will erase with hitting alt clicking but i'll just click in some good parts of him and then i'm going to play forward and it's done and the rotoscope looks really good so i'm just going to hit freeze and that's just going to lock that rotoscope into place okay now that it's frozen we now have a good uh rotoscope of our actor now one thing we need to do is duplicate our background and i'm going to delete the bottoms uh, roto brush effect. So then we have a layer that's rotoscoped and a layer that isn't. All right, now let's drag in our woman on a green screen here. Um, so what we did was we had her hold onto a pole and then got a guy in a green screen suit and just kind of lifted up her legs and added wind and really just made a meal of this, uh, this whole thing. And, uh, you know, we didn't have any wires or anything. So a guy in a green scoot works just the same. So let's, uh, let's drop her in right there. And we're going to put her right below the background image. And we're going to do a quick placement of where she would be. And one thing we did do was make sure uh, his hands were hidden and so her, we can hide her hands behind that so the connection looks a little bit better Okay, so now We got that beautiful now. Let's uh, key her out First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre compose this and leave the attributes So basically I'm going to go into that comp and now we have the comp just by itself And we're just gonna key her out. So we're gonna add key light and we're going to select a darker color and we're just gonna click right there. And we already got a pretty good key from that, but we're gonna have to make that look a little bit better. So then we're gonna go to screen mat, which basically shows in black the, the stuff that's keyed out and white is the stuff that's going to be shown. So I'm gonna click on the color screen color here and then move this around just to get the guy in the green suit kind of cut out. And right there looks about right. Hit OK. I'm gonna play with the clip whites and the clip blacks just to get that into a good spot. Then we're going to switch this to intermediate result. And now the reason why I switch it to intermediate result is just because it looks a lot better than final result because final result adds all this post processing effect to the colors and stuff. And most of the time it doesn't look that good. So I just go intermediate result and it's slightly faster. Let's rotoscope. Let's just mask out the areas that aren't the green screen. So I'm just going to mask in just the hands. And of course I'm just cutting out the handle that she's holding on to. And we're going to go through and just make sure that the mask isn't covering her up at any point. All right, cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an effect called key cleaner. And what that's going to do is just soften up your edges a lot. And it's going to make everything a lot more pleasing Then what I like to do. Now this will slow down your renders quite a bit, but I actually really like this effect. If you hit refine hard matte, and you turn off the feathering, the contrast, the reduced chatter, and the motion blur. Actually, we can keep the motion blur on for this one. And just enable decontaminate edge colors. What you can see is the, the, the darker edges are going to go away. And it actually kind of removes the green as well from the key, which is really nice. Uh, also, 
probably a smart idea to add an advanced spill suppressor and that's just going to take away any extra green that might be there. All right, cool. Now we have a pretty good key of our actress here. But the one problem is uh, we see kind of through her legs. And if I turn off the effects here, that's because we're seeing the hands of the green screen suit man. Uh, so uh, we'll turn the effects back on. And a really easy way to fix this is just adding a solid that is the color of the pants around that area. And then sort of masking in that part of the leg like that and putting it under the image. And then you'll have to go through and sort of mask, animate the mask path by hitting M and uh, clicking the little stopwatch there and moving it and hiding that little hand. Uh, so you'll have to do that for both legs, both sides. I won't show you that process. I'll come back when I'm done. All right, now that I am done with that, I'm going to go back to our footage and see the girls now floating there. Woo! Cool. Uh, let's add a lumetry color on top of it and sort of match the colors of that scene. It's a little bit more blue and maybe reduce the brightness a little bit. So now we have her floating towards nothing. So now we have to add ourselves some tornadoes. So I'm going to use Big Film's uh, Tornado Zero Two Smoke. Uh, it looks really cool and it's in 4K and this is 1080. So when I add it in, it's actually going to be pretty well sized. Um, and we can cheat a little bit. We can scale it up slightly as well. So now we have ourselves a shot of a girl flying towards a tornado. Look at that. And I just placed it right below them too. Now uh, I'm also going to add a lumetry color because just to match it as best as I can, I, I think we're going to make it a little bit more blue and this one seems a bit purple. So I'm just going to make it a little bit more green. There we go. There we go. Just that little change makes that mix very well. Cool. Now it's um, a tornado. She's going towards a tornado. But the things that sell a tornado are the wind and the and the the debris. So that's where the other elements in the apocalypse pack come into play. So first things first, I'm gonna make this tree. In reality, this tree would be moving around a lot. So I'm gonna add a tree element to this. And I believe I'm gonna use tree one. Uh, so tree, the, the, this is my favorite thing in the latest apocalypse pack are these trees because they look so good and we can move them over top of this tree here. Now, if I, I, I just want to sort of match the size of this and scale of it. And because things are going to be moving around a lot, it's going to look like that tree is right there. Now, one way we can do to make that look a little bit more accurate is see that this has some blur to it. So if you add the effect camera lens blur, you can sort of try to just match that blur and camera lens blur is a little bit better of a blur than like Gaussian blur because it um, looks like how a camera blurs out stuff and not just like averaging out the colors and messing with it. So now I'm also going to add a lumetry color to this. And again, basic adjustments, changing the temperature of it. And I'm going to bring the exposure down a good amount. We can see that like it, it feels so much more powerful now that we have this tree added to it. Um, and in my first example, I added a tree to the foreground. So let's add that we're going to put it in front of everything and we're going to scale it up slightly and I might just duplicate the color from this guy right here makes it look really good wow already we're, we're getting a more powerful scene uh, and a few other things we can add some flying debris flying debris 5 has some nice um, and you can barely see it on this but here it's some uh, leaves. So if we throw this in front 
of the background and the tornado, we can add that and kind of scale it and place it. And we already have uh, more debris and it feels more powerful. And let's even go further and add some wood debris to everything right above that, scale it into place. Um, and already we're looking so much better. And it's like, ooh, it's just so much more powerful. And we can also, let me throw the, um, the, the leaves debris in front. So we have foreground elements and background elements moving. Now, uh, for the final touches, let's take everything, select everything, right click, hit pre-compose, and we're gonna call this tornado. And we're gonna move all the attributes and hit okay. Let's add some camera shake. So let's uh, uh, hit P for position and alt click or option click the top, uh, the top stopwatch and then type in wiggle open parentheses and a number uh, which would be the number of pixels it wants to move and how many pixels is the next number separated by a comma so it's like every three seconds i want this to move 50 pixels i believe so when we move and if i do 350 this is probably going to be a little bit too big but yeah, I think that's too big. So let's move that to 20 pixels or something. If we make this first number bigger, every nine seconds it's going to move. And that might be too chaotic. Let's just bring that down to, I don't know, five. So f wiggle five comma 20 it seems to be the best option. Uh, and we see a little bit of our, of our border. So if we scale it up slightly, um, then we shouldn't be able to see the edges anymore. And for good measure, add motion blur by clicking your little motion blur. And right there, we have an amazing looking shot. Um, and then just add your final touches, add Lumetri over everything and add that contrast with a curves adjustment with an S curve, maybe make it more blue, uh, tint it slightly and then bring the exposure down and there you go and it was really easy because all the elements are already done for you and that was it thank you for watching if you have any suggestions put it down in the comments below and if you like this hit like and if you want to comment comment and if you want to subscribe um i don't know what to do there but thank you for watching and i'll see you next time